Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome back to my channel. So, I know the last video I done like a month ago or something, I said I was going to do start more videos. It's just been crazy busy, a lot of stuff to do, and I haven't had a chance. So, I thought I'd come on here and do a quick update. So, a couple video as videos ago, I done updates of my ulcer and the last scope that I had done, I believe, was in March, and my ulcer was pretty much healed up. My bariatric surgeon wanted me to get off the caraphate, wanted me to get off the um, oh, pantepresol, and uh, so I had stopped taking all that stuff. Well, so fast forward since March, you know, I've been off of all that stuff. And I started getting to the point where after I would eat and stuff, sometimes I would start getting really bad chest pains. So come to find out, I finally realized that I was getting chest pains because of acid. And it had got to the point here lately to where like I can feel it gurgling up into my pouch. And when I feel the acid coming up, it starts giving me chest pains. So yesterday morning, I got up, my stomach wasn't feeling too good, it was really acidy, and I got sick and threw up some blood. So, I went to the emergency room, of course, the last place that I wanted to spend the day yesterday. Went, and of course they hooked me up to IVs, done blood tests, done urinalysis. Blood tests came back that I was dehydrated somewhat. Um, it wasn't horrible. So, of course, you know, they had me on fluids the whole time I was in the emergency room. They done a CT scan. CT scan didn't really show a whole lot. So, they come to the conclusion that I have an upper GI bleed. Uh, obviously, it's not that bad at this point because I didn't continue to throw up blood or anything like that. It was just the one time. So they got a hold of my bariatric surgeon to see if he wanted to admit me to the hospital, what he wanted to do. So he decided that he was going to do an emergent uh, scope on Monday. So Monday I'm having a scope done with possible surgical interaction, intervention, I don't know why I said interaction, uh, depending on what he finds. Um, they are almost 100% positive the ulcer is back and, of course, bleeding. So, we do that on Monday. It's going to be a long day Monday because my procedure isn't until 3.30. So, of course, I cannot eat or... I'm allowed to drink clear liquids up until 1.30. Then I have to be there at 2.30, procedure at 3.30. So... I'll keep you updated and let you know what they find out with that as well. So, my mind just went blank. They put me back on Caraphate four times a day, back on the Pantepresol twice a day. I've got to limit caffeine intake, which I have limited caffeine intake from what I had been. Uh, you know, I was drinking quite a bit of coffee every day, hence probably why I get dehydrated as well and then I've gotten bad about my fluid intake because I always take this cup right here to work with me and I think it's like maybe it's 24 ounces this is usually I usually only drink like one of these a day of water if that I know that's horrible um I'm trying to do better this is my third cup third one of these today so I'm doing really well with my uh fluids today I, I'm trying to get back on track oh my god it's hard it is so hard once you get off track to get back on track to have the ability to overcome you know the way you think because I mean I've had weight gain back I was down had gotten down to 203 and now I'm back up to 228. So I've got to get my ass on ball. Oops. May I don't know. Can I say that on YouTube? Sorry. I've got to get back on track. I, there's no excuses. You know, I've worked too hard to come this far and to get off track. And it's, you know, it's not easy. 
there's been so much stuff that has happened that I've, you know, gained weight back. And I finally did start taking my malt tub vitamins again. Can you see my bald spot? Um, for some reason, you know, I, and that was another thing I had stopped taking my, my vitamins every day because my blood work is perfectly fine without the vitamins. So I'm like, hmm, well, I don't need it. Um, but I have noticed I feel better when I take my vitamins. So whenever I start taking the men's multivitamins, I start getting bald spots in my, my beard. If I stop taking them, they go away. I have no idea. I don't know if anyone else has experienced the same thing or not. It's very weird. So I'm going to try to make this video short as possible and give you as much back information as um, I can. So back in April, to make a long story short, my fiance had went to work. He was wearing his mask. His boss was sitting across the table from him coffin not wearing a mask well long story short his boss had covid came in exposed everyone to it my fiance got covid then i got covid then my fiance's dad got covid i didn't have it near as bad as what they did uh, my fiance was in the hospital with pneumonia he was in the hospital for a week uh his dad went into the hospital on, I don't remember the exact day in April, but it was around maybe the 20th or something like that. And Christopher went into the hospital, I think the day after his dad had got into the hospital. We had been trying to get his dad to go to the hospital for a couple of days, but he's stubborn. He doesn't like to listen. Well, at that point in time, we didn't even realize, at, very, at, the, at first, we didn't even realize that we had COVID. You know, we just thought we were sick. I went and got tested first, tested positive. So then Christopher went, he tested positive, And then we didn't have his dad tested because obviously we're exposed. We had called the doctor and stuff and they told us, you know, just to watch him and everything. Well, he wasn't feeling good. And he got to the point where he was just sitting in the chair and, like, he wouldn't re... I mean, he was awake and everything. He just was, like, he was ignoring us, not paying attention or anything. So, finally, I was like, okay, we're calling the squad. You know, they're, you're sick. You, you need to go get help. So, he didn't resist that from us. Well, come to find out, because of the COVID, he had had a heart attack. And so, he went into the hospital had had a second heart attack, I believe, while he was in the hospital. They At one point, they was like, he's not going to overcome this. He's going downhill, you know. Well, then the next day, he was better, started getting better. But because his heart was really weak, he had got to the point where he couldn't swallow on his own. They was getting pureed foods and everything, thickened foods. And the plan was he was going to go into the nursing home on hospice. And we was trying to get everything set up with that to go to the nursing home and everything because the hospital had him in a hospice room there. But because he was not going, you know, he was going to go to a long-term care facility, they was, we was trying to hurry up and get everything set up. But everything was crazy with COVID and work hours and it, it was just, it was crazy. So on the 22nd of May... He was still in the hospital. We was trying to get him, you know, set up to go to the long-term care facility. It was on a Saturday. We went and visited. He was in great spirits, up in the chair. He was doing wonderful. He was eating his food, you know, doing great. So then the next day on Sunday, um, when he wasn't really responsive, he woke up a couple times. They had had to put a catheter in him. You know, he wasn't really putting out much input or output of urine and everything. So the doctor came in, listened to him, and he was like, you know, we're not going to send him to a long-term care facility because he's taking a turn for the worst. And I don't see him making it more than, you know, a couple days, maybe a week. So, um, of course, you still have hope. You don't want that to happen. So the next day, 
we got the phone call that he had passed away in the hospital. So it's, it's, there's been, you know, just a lot of crazy, lots of work, you know, putting together a funeral and trying to do this and trying to do that. So, um, probably April, I've, so I'm fully moved in with Christopher now. I had been staying here since around the time we had gotten COVID. I just hadn't had everything moved in and stuff was working on everything. And then, you know, once we got better and everything, got everything the rest of the way moved in over here. So, you know, we've done lots of cleaning up, still have lots of different things to do because his dad saved pay stubs from the 70s. So we've got so much to clean out. We've been working hard trying to get everything done. But anyways, that's beside the point. That's, I know this channel's about my bariatric, but this is just updates and why I haven't been on. It's just been, you know, a lot of craziness. So I changed jobs back in August. So I had been, you know, retail management at Goodwill, was the store manager. I just couldn't take it anymore. It was horrible. Uh, no one wanted to work. It just, it, it was crazy. So I left retail and I am at now in finance. So 100% difference of what I am used to doing because I worked healthcare, I've worked management, you know, I've done a little bit of all kinds of stuff, but I've never done finance. So it's a completely different field. Uh, I say August, September, October. So I've been there two months. I absolutely love it. Still learning every day. So much training. Um, but I just absolutely love it. I work Monday through Friday now. I'm off on the weekends. Sometimes have to work a couple hours on the last Saturday of the month. But that's no big deal. It's just making some phone calls. So, yeah. Uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff have been going on. So, of course... Hence the weight gain because of all the stress and just, you know, being upset, life changes, you know, all the craziness and it, it just makes you stress eat, I guess. Um, I'm sure most of you have been there. I know it's it's hard to, once you do that, it's, it's very hard to come back from that. Or at least it has been for me. So, it's just... It's been one thing after another. So then um, I don't remember the last video. My little beagle dog, Snoopy, I had, had, I had had to have him put to sleep from because of cancer. And that's been maybe six months or so ago. So I don't think I've even updated since then. And then my fiance's dog that was his dad's, of course, we inherited him and took care of him he had heart disease and was on six different medicines a day and about four three or four weeks ago I came home from lunch I'm, I'm lucky enough to work so close to home that I get an hour lunch and I come home to take care of the dogs well Java our little Havanese that had heart disease he was having trouble breathing so I rushed him to the vet and his heart had just gotten so weak and he was filled up with fluid and we ended up having to have him put to sleep. So that's even more stress on top of everything because as most of you know, if you watch my channel, I love my animals, you know, I will do anything for them. So Chloe, my boxer, I'll try to get a shot of her. Don't mind the mess. She has had a very hard time since Java's been gone. She's never been really at home alone without another dog ever in her 12 years. So it's, each day it's getting a little bit better. However, I took her to her checkup, yearly checkup and everything. They done blood work. This has been two weeks ago. So we got all of our blood work back your analysis and stuff and I have found out that she is in chronic renal failure so we had to she's not allowed to have any kind of dog treats she has to have fruits and vegetables for treats um we had to stop the hill science diet senior that she was on and we're now on a, a prescription renal diet so it's just been very stressful and you know trying to get every my eating back under control 
it's just crazy. And I mean, I don't like gorge myself on food and overeat, you know, to the amount of what I can hold or whatnot. It's just, I'll snack on junk food, Oreos or a candy bar and um, carbs that I'm not supposed to. So I really got to get back on track and it's not easy, but I know I can do it. Um, you know, in the beginning of my journey, I got on track. I done very well and I know I can do it again. It's just getting into that mindset of, of getting back on track. And I, if I could meal prep, I think it would be a lot better. I just haven't taken the time to even set back and meal prep. So that's a little bit about what has been going on. I would like to try to start making some healthier meals and maybe making videos of them. I have the All About Food channel where I started making, doing videos years ago, um, cooking videos and recipes and, and everything as well. And I haven't even done that. I couldn't even tell you the last time I made a video for that. So I just kind of wanted to come on and update everyone about what's been going on, life changes, moving, you know, losing loved ones, getting off track, and, um, yeah, so that's what's been going on with me. I will definitely do an update video sometime next week to let you guys know what we find out with the scope, how bad the ulcer is, what they end up doing, if they need to do any kind of intervention, all that good stuff. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm already at like 17 minutes. I don't want to keep boring you guys. This video is probably going to be really weird because I think generally to get the full screen, I need to turn my phone on its side when I record the video, and I did not do that. I'm just kind of holding it up in front of me, so I apologize about that. Anyways, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your week. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.